Hey, what's up guys? Steven G. Fittis off of uh, ZGGTR, COG forums, and Facebook for that matter. Um, today I'm going to be doing a video how to install on projector headlights on the 20... Um, well, it should apply for all concourses, but uh, I'm doing it on my 2013 concourse. Um, the advantages to projector headlights are much brighter uh, than the factory reflector style housing that uses the uh, halogen bulbs and it also keeps that brightness out of other drivers eyes versus putting a straight HID bulb into the reflector housing. Um, if you just put a straight HID bulb in which a lot of guys like to do it can be overly bright for other drivers and blinding to them and if uh, if they're coming at you or the opposite direction of you on the road and they're blinded there's a good chance that they could hit you. You want to draw attention to yourself, not uh, increase the chances of somebody hitting you. And that's the advantages of uh, projectors over uh, just HIDs in a straight housing. There's also a little flicker effect, which I'll demonstrate a little bit later on in the video. But uh, for right now, I'm going to get started on tearing this thing apart. Alrighty, here's a little uh, tip in removing all the fairings. Right down inside of here, after you've removed all the uh, associated plastic, there's a eight millimeter, yes, eight millimeter bolt. All right, so when you're removing the um, the headlight up and down adjustment cable, if you look down in here. Right here, all you gotta do is untwist, pull out, and that undoes the cable. Now to get the rest of this thing apart. All right, now I'm at the point where I'm going to begin to install the wiring harness for the projector system, for the HID system that goes into the projectors. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this cover off and uh, pull out my mess of wiring that's in there already and add to it and then the wiring harness is going to run up here um, towards the front of the bike and I'm going to leave myself a little bit of extra length right now because I'm going to bring out my test system and make sure it all works before I bake the headlights. All right, one thing you want to do is uh, while you're in here doing your electrical connections, you make sure you sand off this area where the ground is because uh, from the factory, when I uh, originally did some electrical work to add some power points back here, um, from the factory, it had a whole bunch of uh, powder coat over the entire area except for one small sliver. And these bikes are notorious for ground problems, so a good way to alleviate said ground problems is to make sure that you've got a good solid uh, ground connection there. So I sanded off quite a bit uh, in my last modification. All right, so what I have here is a uh, test rig that I have built to uh, make sure everything's work, to make sure that I don't need to bend the cutoff shields any, um, and to make sure that it's the sharpest cutoff line. I did that inside on the wall. It's recommended to do it at 25 feet uh, or longer. Oh, hi, little buddy. Huh. Little squirrel came over. Check out what I'm doing. Anyways, uh, so, uh, I lost my train of thought, stupid squirrel. Anyways, um, what it is, if you look on the inside of the projector here, you see this cutoff shield. And that is what makes it so that, uh, the light doesn't go into oncoming driver's eyes. I know that's on the bottom, but because of how the lens is, it flips um, it flips the the way the light is um, upside down. So this does indeed need to be on the bottom, 
and that keeps, the keeps it from going up to the top and driver's eyes. So uh, what I'm about to do here is hook everything up to the bike as if uh, it was installed into the headlights and test out, make sure my wiring harness works and make sure that all of this system works with the bike before I bake the headlights apart. All right, so now everything is hooked up electrically, how it will be in the uh, final assembly, but it's all apart so I can test things. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and fire the bike up now and that should, in theory, turn on the headlights and uh, enable me to have my high beam, low beam adjustments, which you'll hear in the video. Um, yeah, here it goes. All right, so I've got the uh, headlights there turned on, and uh, now that I put the fuse in, and uh, here's what the cutoff looks like with uh, with the headlights on, and you'll see you'll see what I'm talking about with the cutoff where it um, where it's in the driver's eyes versus not in the driver's eyes, and this is why it's important to have projectors. Uh, when you're running an HID system instead of just reflectors. So we're gonna come down and you're gonna start seeing a little bit of a color flicker as it goes into the beam of the projection. Now we're fully in the beam, blinding other people's eyes, but because we have the headlights aimed properly, as we come above the beam, now we're not blinding other driver's eyes. Uh, now that I've got this all tested out, I'm going to go ahead and solder those connectors on that I electrical taped earlier and um, go through a very expensive headlight into the oven and hope to God I don't melt it. All right, now that uh, I've got those soldered together, I'm gonna give this one more test run, just to make sure that everything is good to go before I start making permanent modifications. High beam, low beam. High beam, low beam, and flush to pass. It all works well. Let's go cook some headlights. All right, what I have here in my hand is a $300 piece of very expensiveness that is going to go into this oven that is set for 200 degrees and it's going to sit in that oven for approximately six minutes, maybe more, maybe a little bit less. I'm gonna gauge it, and the purpose of putting it into the oven is to heat up the glue that's in this seam right here. I don't wanna melt the lens, which is why it's only staying in there for so long and why it's at such a low heat. The only thing I wanna do is make sure that the glue in this seam is hot enough to be pliable and melt away. After I pull it out of the oven, I'm going to pop these tabs here, 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 and there's some more all around the headlight, and uh, get into this groove with a screwdriver and start prying the housing open. Um, once I pull the housing off, that will give me access to the inside so I can put the projector unit in, which is going to sit inside of this hole right here where the headlights used to be. So, here goes nothing.
There we go. And that is what the housing looks like on the inside. Alrighty, um, now I'm on to the, one of the easier parts of this, um, which is putting the projectors into the bowls. Move this back here, so you don't see my goofy face. All right, so here I have the projectors as they were set up for, uh, for the testing. And so I'm going to remove them from the housing. That's as easy as removing the bulbs. All right, um, now I am to the point where I'm going to start installing the projectors in. First, that giant pigtail that's on the projector um, for the high low beam solenoid, that needs to go inside. Make sure that when you put these in, that the shutter is on the bottom. Remember, the lens flips it. It's gonna go in there like that. Actually, I'm gonna turn this around because it's going to make my next step easier. And the wire, when you install it, is gonna go into that little slot that's for the uh, hook that holds the stock bulb in. run through, pick it up, it's going to run through that little slot right there, and carefully, I'm going to take this piece here that's got a kind of oblong conical shape to it, and you're going to put it with the, uh, so that the curve goes with the rest of the housing, so the, where it's higher, and it's going to sit in right like that, and you're going to lock it in just like you would the stock headlight bulb. Actually, I'll unrun that wire for a second. Get him out of the way so it doesn't get damaged. Alright, and carefully. up the projector, pulling the wires through. Now you've got your silicone donut. That donut is going to go on right like that. And then the projector itself gets mounted in. All right, so I'm gonna show you a close up here of what I'm finding out. So in the hole here, let me show you how this goes together. This piece goes like this like that into the hole and sits like that but that doesn't actually sit straight it sits cockeyed slightly to the right so what I'm going to have to do is take a Dremel and take this notch off that notch if we look at the projector here slides into this notch right down here and uh, that is designed to keep the projector straight up and down. Um, I don't think that's going to be a huge issue. I will use Loctite or something like that on it to, um, or maybe a small dab of JB Weld to make sure that that stays in place and doesn't twist. But uh, that will be an issue and in order to properly work the and to look good, the projectors need to be level. Um, I was a little bit afraid of that happening and that just confirmed my fears. So I'm going to go Dremel that off and be back with you once I've got that other side assembled.
So now I've got both of these in. You see where I've run the wire through that little hole there, and same on this side. Um, get a little bit better light on that. Here we go. And you can see the hole where the HID goes into. And so far, and this isn't even tightened down to, yet, but so far it seems like it's a uh, pretty secure setup. A lot more secure than I thought it was going to be in the past. I've used a lot of JB Weld. Um, it's got a little bit of movement, but like I said, I haven't tightened everything down yet. Um, so, I'm going to go grab my shrouds and do a quick mock-up and um, then do some testing on this, make sure I've got them level before I crank them down for the last time. Alright, so yesterday um, I went to a football game with or went to the bar to watch a football game with some friends and uh, after we got back uh, I worked a little bit more on these while finishing up the football game and uh, what I did is I plugged these back into the test um, test system that I had set up yesterday and then uh, straightened them out so that they're well perfectly flat. I did have to trim off that little groove in the bottom of the plate, or rather top of the plate. Um, I also, in the back of these shrouds, installed that ring, um, which turned out to be quite a pain in the butt. Uh, I would recommend using something like this block of wood here to press it in, that way you're not hurting your hands, and that will also get it in faster so you don't do what I did and rub the chrome off the front, which means I'm going to have to take this all back apart eventually and uh, replace that because I don't like that. But it has to go back together because it's my daily driver. Um, so what I'm about to do is clean up all of the uh, fingerprints off of the, the shroud and if there's anything in the bowl and use a uh, air gun to blow any dust out of it. I'll be putting three points of silicone on that so I can slide the um, shroud back on and it will stay. One more pass through with an alcohol pad, cleaning up any fingerprints. Remove the bulbs and throw it in the oven to heat the glue back up so I can get this guy sealed and back on the bike. Alright, so I've run into a, a couple site clearance issues. One of them I'm not going to take care of, the other one I will. Uh, first one is up in here in the uh, cup. The shroud is slightly touching on either side, but because I plan on pulling this back apart, um, I'm just going to leave it as is until I can get some new shrouds, and then uh, I'll modify the shrouds before I put the new shrouds on. And then <clears throat> there's a slight clearance issue with this top balance right here. Um, I think my first try, I'm going to try to heat it up and just bend it up ever so slightly because there's enough room in there. Um, if that doesn't work, then I will uh, take a pair of nippers to it and just kind of trim that back since nobody's going to see it anyways. All right, so here we have the final product. Very, very OEM look as far as uh, aftermarket lighting concerns go. Um, my only complaint is my screw up on that shroud right there, but like I said, I plan on pulling this all apart and remedying that in the future.
um, I was able to use the heat gun to bend that little top piece up to get the clearance between the shrouds and the housing and uh, when I replace the uh, when I replace the shrouds I'll trim them up so that they sit just a little bit more square but they don't look bad right now overall uh, quite happy with it time to get it all back on the bike All right, so here are a few final closing thoughts on this install. Um, this, some of this is after the fact, after thoughts, um, things that I learned from, and uh, a couple mistakes that I made that hopefully others can avoid because I made them and I'm documenting them. Um, first off is the cutoff line is slightly off. If you look here, you can, uh, you can see where there's one. And there's two. I'm gonna block one of them. And then there's where is it? There we go. There's the other one. So you can kind of see where the different cutoff lines cut off. And uh, another issue is I actually didn't get the um, get the housing properly sealed I don't think I could be wrong it could just be leftover moisture in there from because it was pretty humid yesterday um, but I was riding in the rain today and I noticed some moisture build up uh, especially in this corner and down here too so what I'm going to do to fix that is um, drop a silica gel packet in there that's tied to a string so that I can try to draw the moisture out and see if that fixes it if it does, great. If it doesn't, then uh, when I pop this back apart, I'll have to make sure I get a better seal on it. A good way to make sure that you get that seal is to get the glue that the retrofit source sells um, as an add-on to the kit. The standard Mini H1 kit for the motorcycles does not come with the glue. It's like a $5 add-on. Um, I will definitely be ordering that to uh, reseal this after I take it apart to remedy my issue that I had with the shroud because I screwed it up. Um, overall, I'm pretty happy with how this whole project turned out. Obviously, uh, I've had these before, as I said. Um, I, have, I had it on my 650. I had one on my uh, old Honda 450. Um, I ended up doing the 650 one twice um, because I wanted to change a couple things. And uh, yeah, overall, super, super happy with this. Um, go to the retrofitsource.com. And uh, my recommendation is to get their pre put together mini H1 kit, especially if it's your first time. Um, I pieced together mine with B stock parts, but um, unless you're experienced and know what you're doing with retrofits, I wouldn't recommend doing that because. The, the first time you do it, you can run into a lot of problems. And this is, like I said, this is the fourth one that I've done. And I still ran into a few problems here and there. Um, so yeah, get the kit from the retrofit source. And uh, all the guys there are super, super good customer service. Best customer service you'll find out in the automotive world. Anyways, uh, I hope this how-to helped. And uh, hopefully I'll see some more concourses out there with uh, retrofit.